Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, February 8th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Look at a slightly more interesting uh, phishing email uh, today. The email itself was relatively straightforward. It was one of those DHL, we need more details to ship your package uh, phishing emails. But the phishing site was hosted on what's sometimes called a distributed web platform or, well, not 100% sure if it's really Web 3, maybe it's sort of more Web 2.5. The idea is that you have these distributed platforms hosting your content to make it more difficult to take down. Since uploading files, like in this case, an HTML file with JavaScript is free, this of course makes it an even more attractive target for phishing sites. The particular service being used here is known as Skynet or siasky.net and the phishing site itself is well all html and javascript one way how they're trying to make things a little bit more plausible is by actually including a rendering of the company's website so at the end of the URL, you'll find your email address, and then it takes the domain part of the email address, sends that off to a free service that creates an image of the website, and it then displays that image as a background, making it a little bit look like uh, you actually are visiting your homepage, and then there is this login page pop up on top of it. Similar with the company logo, it's also being included. Now, I have seen that, uh, many times before and there are again services that uh, this JavaScript connects to in order to pull in the correct logo based on the email domain. Now, as far as uh, takedown notices go with these distributed web platforms, they should still work. And uh, via Discord, I found an email address to report this to Skynet. At this point, nothing has happened yet. About 12 hours after reporting it, I hope my email reporting it uh, went through. We had some issues where, well, it may have been flagged as a phishing email because, of course, it mentions uh, the URL that was uh, being used here. And Microsoft uh, decided to make it even more difficult for users uh, to infect themselves by enabling macros in Office documents downloaded from the internet. This will work via the mark of the web feature, which is added whenever you're downloading a document from the internet. And if a document was downloaded, so the mark of the web is present, then uh, macros will not be enabled and it won't be as easy as it's now uh, to enable them. At this point, if uh, you download a document, there will be a pop-up telling you that macros are disabled, but all you have to do is click a button in order to enable them. The future behavior will be that there is what they're calling a trust bar, basically uh, pointing out that macros have been disabled with a link to a page that tells you more about why they have been disabled. So it won't be as easy to enable macros again. One little caveat here, this only works if you save the documents on an NTFS file system because that is needed in order to actually use this mark of the web attribute. If you save them on a FAT32 format device like a USB stick or such, then this feature will not work. Starting in April, you'll see this show up in the preview version and then later in the year, you'll uh, see it in the normal default version of Microsoft Office. And I told you I'll be paying closer attention uh, to flaws in backup software. The latest example, a Cronus released an update for its backup software through image 2021. We are now at update six for uh, this particular version. It fixes a number of local privilege escalation vulnerability, mostly due to loading of unsigned binaries, DLL hijacking, and of course, a few improper access control checks. 
And the FBI released a bulletin with indicators of compromise for Lockbit 2.0. It's based on very recent samples. Now you may say, hey, I don't really need an indicator of compromise for ransomware because ransomware usually just tells me that uh, it has encrypted my systems. One thing where these come in handy is that you may actually be able to detect a compromise before all of your files are encrypted. So take a look at this and uh, something nice to add to your endpoint security platforms. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.